that fits perfectly in the ignition and not in the door. Well, if it fits in the door, then it doesn't fit in the ignition when they both take the same key. Old world craftsmanship. Would you like me to try it? No, I would not like you to try it. Hi, Mr. Dixon. Hi, Mr. Hi. Dixon. Mr. Kaufman. Good morning. Can I help you with that? Oh, uh, no, it's, uh, it's just stuck. No big problem. Thanks. Let Ben try it. I do know how to do it, sir. He does if he says he does. There you go. I wouldn't take it too hard. Mr. Coffin, he was at the top of his class in driver's ed. Was he? Mm-hmm. Just remember one thing. No good deed goes unpunished. Thanks. Oh, Flynn, are you still planning on going to Western Tech? Sure am. Tech? That's a pretty tough school to get into. He'll make it. Why Tech, Glenn? There are a lot of other good schools around. For what I need, Western Tech's the best. Best staff, best equipment. A diploma from Tech really means something. How are your grades? Not bad. I have to do really great on the rest of my exams. You will. Glenn's been studying like crazy. You know, we haven't been to a movie in like three weeks. Come on, Miggy, let's go. I have to run to the library before homeroom. See ya. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Desist. Some fool who knows less about this subject than you might think they're code for true and false. Glenn. Glenn, number 19, Glenn. Would you shut up? I can't do this stuff with you. All right. You two back there talking. Bertie Landis and Glenn Pierce, turn your papers in. But, sir, uh, I was uh, just asking him how much time we had left, sir. Automatic zero. Turn your papers in now. I wasn't cheating, sir. That's true, sir. You were breaking the rules. Pierce, I saw you talking to him. You don't deny that. No, sir, but I... It's an automatic zero. The rules are posted. But, but he didn't do anything, sir. It was my fault. Oh, sure. Pierce, did Ferdy here ask you for the answer to a question? I don't know what he said, sir. I, I just told him to keep quiet. All I asked him was how much time we had left on us, sir. Mr. Honest and Mr. True. Look, Ferdy, you cheat all the time. Oh, well, maybe you get caught or twice. What do you care? You're way ahead. You want me to fall on my sword? I said I was sorry. Oh, what good does that do, Glenn? You're a crook and he has to pay. Okay, Miggy. You can't take a zero, Glenn. You just can't afford it. Look, I told Bruckner it wasn't his fault. What do you want me to do? Oh, big deal. What good does that do, Glenn? Come on, Maggie. Oh, what do you it, want huh? me to do, man? I mean, I said I was sorry. You have to do something. 
Look, just leave it alone, huh? Somebody has to. But it's not fair. I mean, some people cheat all the time. And maybe they get caught once or twice. All right, they're beating the law of averages. But Glenn doesn't cheat. You want me to talk to Mr. Bruckner? Yes. I'll tell him exactly what you've told me. Well, could it be done off the record, confidentially? Megan, I have a feeling that once Mr. Bruckner knows what you've told me, he'll want to discuss this with Glenn and Ferdy. <sighs> no. Then you can't do that. Glenn would much rather be caught dead than think on anybody. I mean, why would he be loyal to Ferdy? That's what boys are made of. Well, if he doesn't get into Western on account of this... Wow, you just don't know what that means. Why don't you let me see what I can do in a underhanded, womanly kind of way? Would you? Don't get your hopes up. I'll do my best. Mr. Bruckner is one of those strict nonconformists we all so deeply admire. That's SOS. T for true. F for false. You know, I think Randy Wilson and John Tremaine have taken the trouble to learn the Morse code. Hello, Howie. Hi. Hi. What's happening, Dixon? Oh, Howie was just explaining the educational side effects of higher mathematics. Oh, Morse code. He thinks his students are sending and receiving. He also thinks that we ought to offer the students a diploma in subversion. That's not too far-fetched. You know what this is? A fake fingernail. Right. Now, look at the back. Notice the fine print. Well, isn't that something? Excellent detail. Hmm. Those are theorems for making triangles congruent. Very imaginative, right? How are you just going to have to make those girls check in their fingernails at the door before every exam? <laughs> well, I don't want to go too far. We wouldn't want to discourage the students in one of their new creative activities. You know, Howie, some kids in every class cheat. But you always seem to have more than you share. That's true. No, we all do our best to prevent cheating, but you seem to get a kick out of it. He likes to trap people. Oh, come on, that's not the point. What is the point? Them against us? Students against teachers? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if your cops and robbers approach doesn't encourage kids to cheat, just to see if they can get away with it. Could be, it's a game. It's not a game to me. When a kid cheats, he hurts himself and he hurts the kids around him. It's one of the biggest problems in this school and one of the hardest to solve. But it is a game, and its name is Beat the System. The students who learn to beat it go out in the world, and they're the ones who succeed. Ah, now I see. So Glenn Pierce failed to beat the system, is that it? Glenn Pierce? Yes, he did fail. He broke the rules and he got caught. Did he complain to you? No, he didn't complain. He wouldn't. What happened? Howie gave Glenn Pierce a zero on his quarterly exam for talking, not for cheating. For breaking the rules. As I understand it, he was telling someone to leave him alone. Do you realize what this could do to his chances for college? No, I don't, Pete, and I'm not obligated to. You are rotten, Howie. I mean, really. You could at least give him a makeup exam. That would be the fair thing. I will give him a makeup exam. But first, I want something from him, an honest answer. I want to know what Ferdy Landis asked him. You want him to think. Is that what you're penalizing him for, for not thinking? Why do you people suggest that I have an obligation to be fair and honest and decent while he doesn't? You want justice? Well, maybe the price is being a little unpopular. Face up to it. I have. It's Mr. Bruckner's decision. Maybe it's arbitrary, but... Why can't he give him a makeup? He's not obliged to. Try talking to him, Glenn. There's a lot at stake if you want to get into Western. I can't beg. I just can't, not him. Who said beg? I suggested you talk. Glenn, you've got to. What's the point? He wants me to think on someone. Well, maybe you ought to tell him about Ferdy. No! We've been all through that. Look, you've still got your in-semester test. Why don't you really try to hit that? Then maybe, instead of an average, he'll give you the final test grade for the course. 
I mean, Mr. Kaufman does not like to go over a teacher's head. But if you really have a case, I'll go to him. You know how tough that final's gonna be? <laughs> Bruckner's parting shot. Well, we have a couple of weeks to study for it. Thanks, Miss McIntyre. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Glenn. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to talk to you. Hey, what's up? Uh, well, you know, it's kind of a problem. What, should I go? If you got something to say, man, go ahead. Uh, well, it's about Bruckner's final. We found a way to get a look at it. Five of us put up ten bucks apiece. Are you crazy? What are you gonna do, Ferdy? Steal the exam? Me? Hey, no, man. Hey, Glenn, look, you know, if you're not interested in it, forget it. You know, I just thought because you took a zero on account of me. What are you trying to do now? Send him to San Quentin? Hey, shh. Will you cool it? Look, it's foolproof. But if you're not interested, Glenn, just... You are terrible. Hey, Megan. I mean, you're not even supposed to be part of this conversation, so don't come on so strong, huh? All right, Ferdy. Forget it. I was just trying to help you out. You know how tough Bruckner's finals are. Come on, Glenn. Well, you know, it's possible, Chase. I mean, I once knew this guy who wrote the entire Gettysburg Address down on a piece of dental floss, mm. right? And when the teacher was just about to bust him, zap, he'd wipe it clean and destroy the evidence. <laughs> hey, that's great. Hey, you man, you don't believe anybody. <laughs> well, you know what is true? You know what is true? What? Last year, remember Pat Warner? Yeah. And her meat brain friend, Claudine? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, they had a set of signals like deaf and dumb. Yeah. It was pretty far out. Okay, Lorna told me that she transmitted the entire IQ test. So now Claudine's going through life on Lorna's IQ. <laughs> Beautiful. I can dig on that. Looks like a caucus of revolutionaries in a very deep rap. That's a student talk rap. How, are you doing, How are you, Mr. Coffee? Hi, what's the subject? Oh, honesty. It's a laugh. Honesty and how to get around it. <laughs> Sir! Did you see that collage thing that Carlos Santana did for our class? I mean, from just a month's worth of newspapers and magazines, he collected 297 different examples of swindling, cheating, uh, wheeling and dealing by big business, uh, physicians, politicians, mayors, athletes. I saw him. Did you happen to notice that there was not one instance of safe cracking by a high school principal on there? Did you uh -huh. notice that? <laughs> well, sure, you leave high school and that's the last time you see an honest person. <laughs> but you're the people that are gonna change all that, right? Oh, no, sir, not us. You don't want to see us overthrow the system. No, sir, law and order. Jokes aside, Mr. Kaufman, don't you think that an honest man got less chance of success in this world than a dishonest one? Hmm. It's a difficult question to answer, Jason. Depends on what you mean by success. Oh, Mr. Kaufman, if you were just a little crooked, you'd be superintendent of schools by now. Or mayor. President, even. Mm-hmm. Tell me something. What's wrong with being a high school principal? You know what I mean. The cats I know who break the law got the biggest, baddest, shiniest rise, and honest cats is walking around barefoot. Well, see, what you mean is that some people are cutting corners and making it, then unfortunately I have to agree with you. But if you're saying that an honest man cannot be successful, then that's simply not true. But, but don't you admit that it's harder for an honest man to make it? Look, nobody gets any guarantees in this world that what you want is going to come easy. Well, why make it harder for yourself by being straight? Because that way, you see, even if you fail, you begin to understand yourself. You know your strengths, you know your weaknesses. And believe me, nothing is more valuable when you face a challenge. Mr. Kaufman. I know, that sounds very square, doesn't it? But you see, I have no interest in being hip. What I'm interested in is that you people should go out into the world as honest, decent citizens that care enough about the next guy not to want to cheat him. See, for me, the man that's successful is the man with self-respect and the guy who's won the love and respect of a few friends. A cheater can never know that kind of success. Well, okay, end of sermon for today. It's a pleasure to do business with you. Peace. So long, Mr. You know, he's not a bad old guy, Mr. Coffin. Living in a dream world. Oh, what does he know? Well, I guess the only way to stay clean in this world is to be a teacher or a revolutionary. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey, Glenn. How's the math coming? Slow. Sweat, man. Oh.
What's down so hard? What's the matter with me? Am I dumb or something? I was never this bad in math. You just hung up on a few things. Butler's got you psyched. Yeah, I've done exactly nothing else in a week. Nothing, just math. And I still can't get it. We have time. Sure. It's a good thing you didn't come around any sooner. It only came through last night. But you still got two days before the exam. Who gets to keep the ten bucks? Oh, not me. See, one of the custodians has a friend. Hey, listen, what do you care? I sure feel lousy about this. Why? You're just facing the facts. Yeah, well, it still makes me feel lousy. You don't look at it right. Suppose, for instance, you paid a tutor $40. Well, he'd spot you 150 questions you'd probably be asked. This way, you pay $10 for 50 questions you'll positively be asked. Glenn, it's just a more efficient way of reviewing the course. What's wrong with him? Is he stoked up or something? What? Well, he's been winking and grinning at me all through study hall. Giving me peace signs and power signs. Oh, he's all right. Hey, remember what he said about being able to get a hold of Bruckner's final? Well, the kids say it's true. Yeah, I know. Well, is that possible? I mean, really. How could he do it? What's that? Mr. Bruckner's final. I haven't opened it yet. You got that from Ferdy? I gave him $10. How come? Look, I didn't get a fair shake from Bruckner. That's the truth, isn't it? Yes, it's true. Okay. I'm not perfect. I'm sorry, I thought you knew. I knew. Well, what was I supposed to do? I'm no Superman. Should I have asked your permission? No. You know what this means. You're getting into Western. That's right. Yes, I know. Call you later. Maggie. Does it have to be such a big thing? I don't know, Glenn. I honestly don't know. Mr. Dixon? Mr. Dixon, I'd like to ask you something. Go ahead. It's, uh, it's kind of about cheating. Everybody cheats, don't they? A lot of people cheat. Some a lot less of them than others. And I'm certain some not at all. Well, you saw that collage with all the white-collar crimes, didn't you? I saw it. And that was just a small percentage of the ones who got caught. If you're saying there's too much crookedness, of course there is. And what about in school? Like an exam. Don't most of the kids cheat? I don't know. Some do, some don't. Why? Because the ones that do have a big advantage over the ones that don't. I want to get into college. Is it so wrong to... Cheat? Yeah, cheat when everybody else is doing it. If nobody else cheated, I wouldn't mind. But it's not fair to me to be the only one who doesn't. Glenn, if you're asking me to tell you that it's okay to cheat, I'm not going to do that. I know. But can you tell me why I should be honest? You're 18 years old. And if you can live easy with hustling and dishonesty, then there's nothing that I can say that's going to keep you straight. It isn't right or wrong. Uh, it's just up to me. Is that what you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. Because I'm very big on right and wrong. And cheating on an exam is wrong, no matter how many other kids do it. So don't ask for my approval. However, I don't intend to go through a big song and dance to try to convince you that honesty is the best policy either. Or to try to sell you inner peace and satisfaction. You either accept those things or you don't. You want to join the honest community? Pay the price. You know, Mr. Dixon, uh, you're not telling me anything I don't already know. Right.
All right, now, any talking is an automatic zero. And all of the ladies, please keep your fingernails on. You can all turn over your papers and begin. Grades will be posted at 3 o'clock. This is uh, really a good test of a person's ability, sir. Really good. Mickey, you got an 87. Oh, what did you get? 79. 79? It's not enough. Not for Weston. Hey, hey, none of that in the halls during school hours. Well, what did you get? Oh, I took a 93. I didn't want to be greedy. That was very fair of you. What'd you get, Glenn? 79. 79? Then you didn't use the exam? No. Well, why? I mean, can you explain that to me? I didn't feel like it. I just didn't feel like using the exam you sold me. You didn't feel like it. You mean you didn't feel like getting a 93 instead of a 79? If I could have gotten it on my own, sure. Well, what has that got to do with it? A 93 is a 93. Come on, tell me the real reason. You wouldn't understand, Freddie. Try me, I want to know. Okay. Okay, the reason I didn't cheat was... Well, because I wanted to feel good. Feel good? What is that supposed to mean? Come on, Maggie. Well, what do you mean by that? Do you feel good? I feel fine. Will you come on? We're just going for coffee. A place for everything. Look, we'll only be gone ten minutes. Okay. Oh, did you hear about Glenn Pierce? No, I didn't. Oh, uh, Maggie told me he didn't get into Western Tech. Gee, that's too bad. Yeah. But he's filling out all kinds of applications for other schools, and he feels sure he'll get into one of them. He'll do all right. Sure he will. Just like you. Suppose you cheated your way through high school. Right now, you'd be sharing your coffee break with an unshaven, mean prison guard instead of a beautiful, intelligent, warm-hearted lady who really digs you. Isn't that something? And all this time, I thought honesty was just its own reward. Mm-mm. 